Pedestrianism is the name that uh, was given to a sport that was very popular in the 1880s and uh, 1890s. Basically, it's competitive walking. Races took place indoors, outdoors, roller rinks, small towns, big cities. It was a wildly popular sport for a brief period of time. My name is Matthew Algio, and I am the author of Pedestrianism, When Watching People Walk Was America's Favorite Spectator Sport. It was kind of the grandfather of all spectator sports in the United States. The first trading cards came out in the uh, 1880s, and they featured pedestrians. And uh, actually, they're very valuable today. The guys uh, who would win the most popular matches, they might win $20,000, $25,000 uh, for six days' work, basically. And that today would be roughly, uh, you know, half a million or $700,000. So uh, pedestrianism really kind of uh, set in motion the things that have led us to this sports industrial complex that we have today. You're going to name a famous athlete in America at the time, uh, not even just a walker, just a famous athlete. Uh, the first name that would come to mind in the uh, mid-1870s would be Edward Payson Weston, undisputed champ. Weston always spent 110% of whatever, what he earned. He always was in money, financial trouble. So what he would do is he would get people to back him on big wagers for walking events. One of the most famous was uh, walking from Portland, Maine to Chicago uh, in 25 days, I believe it was. And uh, this was a $10,000 wager that somebody uh, bet him that he couldn't do it. And so he did do it and uh, he made the, the, you know, he won the wager and this is how he supported himself. Then he decided to take his act indoors. And this was really genius on Weston's part. And this is really kind of the beginning of spectator sports in the United States. At the time, roller skating, of all things, was a really popular pastime. So there were roller skating rinks popping up everywhere. And uh, Weston would go and walk in these roller skating rinks. And he would attempt to walk 100 miles in 24 hours and charge people 10 cents. And, you know, there really wasn't much else to do at the time. We're talking the 1870s, 1880s. Uh, you know, live entertainment really was uh, mostly for rich people. I mean, it cost a dollar to go see a play. Of course, there's no phonographs, there's no radio, nothing like that. And so, especially in small towns, this was really an important uh, form of recreation and, and, and entertainment for people to go watch uh, Weston the Walker. Weston was so successful at staging these walking exhibitions all over the country that uh, competitors sprang up. I mean, it was inevitable. And uh, the most famous of them uh, was an uh, Irish immigrant uh, from Chicago, a guy named Daniel O'Leary. And uh, he challenged Weston uh, to, a, to a match, to a walking match. And so eventually they met in a uh, five-day race in Chicago. Weston versus O'Leary for the walking championship of the world as it was billed, and 10,000 people a night would come watch. Um, over the course of the week, the attendance would be, and because it was a continuous event, 24-7, you could sell tickets all day, all day. So the cumulative attendance would be, uh, you know, 100,000, because you could get, over the course of a day, 20,000 people coming in. And uh, Weston lost. O'Leary uh, defeated Weston, and he became uh, the preeminent pedestrian in the United States at the time. Pedestrians often had very distinctive walks and uh, kind of the way baseball players uh, have distinctive batting stances and they were known for the way they walked and kids would imitate them on the school ground the way they walked. Um, Edward Payson Weston, he had what was described as a wobbly walk and uh, we think it was a lot like what uh, modern race walkers do where they kind of swivel their hips like that and move like that. Um, on the other hand, Daniel O'Leary, he had a uh, a more a workmanlike walk. Uh, they said his arms moved like pistons, and so he would just keep his head straight down, and he just walked like this for days and days and hours. These guys were making, I mean, the equivalent of millions of dollars a year. Um, as so often happens, however, with athletes, <laughs> many of them squandered everything, and uh, it's one of, the, one of the sad parts of the story is that so many of these guys really died penniless. Um, but they lived it up while they were making it. Incidentally, uh, Edward Weston was killed by uh, an automobile crossing the street in New York, uh, which was a very sad uh, and ironic end for Edward Weston. The obituaries um, tried to calculate how many miles he had walked in his life. It was estimated at his death that Weston had walked anywhere from 250 to 500,000 miles, which is basically the equivalent of walking to the moon and back.